Did cordless phones really need color screens? I don't know, but this one has it, and that's probably why it's the greatest cordless phone ever made. Here we have a piece of cordless phone history. More features than you could shake a stick at. Let's unbox this thing and see what it was like to live the high life in the cordless phone arena. So, this is the VTEC LS5145. You can see it's 5.8 gigahertz digital spread spectrum technology. And this was really at the very advent of five gigahertz uh, tech rolling out, five gigahertz wireless tech that is, and all of the wireless networks were in 2.4 gigahertz when this thing came out. And the promise of this phone was it wouldn't be uh, interfering with your Wi-Fi and your neighbor's Wi-Fi wouldn't mess with your cordless phone. It was out here in the wild west with 5.8 gigahertz in your phone. And honestly, it was still in the gigahertz processor war. So I think they thought, if we put a bigger number on the box, people will think it's better. The reality of that is that with the shorter wavelength of 5.8 gigahertz, you lose some range, but people reported getting over 900 feet away from the base station and this thing working perfectly. So here we are with the LS5145. Let's talk about a couple of the features that are on the box real quick. Uh, 5.8 gigahertz, like we said, protect yourself from identity theft with digital security. Original cordless phones were all analog. This is encrypted, encrypted cordless phone communications. That'll help you keep the old FBI off your tail, or will it, because they're just gonna wiretap the landline. Uh, you could expand this to 12 handsets using one phone jack, so one base station. Bluetooth enabled, which is one of the craziest things about this. You could add your phone and your Bluetooth headsets to it and use this as like your communications base for your house. That was the promise of it. Dual caller ID, call waiting, digital answering system up to 15 minutes of recording on the built-in answering system, uh, 65,000 color color display, handset and base speaker phones, speaker phones wherever. You know, it's just critical to have those. Recordable ringtones and polyphonic, which was pretty wild. You could just record any song you wanted, have it as a ringtone. 15 preset ringtones, intercom between handsets, always a nice touch. If you had a handset in every room, you could use the intercom between them and save yourself an intercom system in your house, I guess. Transfer calls between handsets, that's a cool touch. Conference and outside call between handsets, and 100 name and number phone book directory with a huge drawback. Wherever you set up your phone book, whether you did it on the base station or the handset, it would not share those. Every handset had its own discrete phone book, so if you needed to save those numbers everywhere, you had to do it on every handset. Uh, spare battery charger with power failure backup. You could put a battery in the base station, the same battery as the handset, and it would keep the base station running if there was a power outage. Really cool voicemail waiting indicator. It's an LED. Animated wallpaper, which was crazy. One of the biggest features with the color display. Wi-Fi friendly, right on the box. Blue backlit keypad. I mean, this is in the Razer days, so they just stole it right out of the Razer's marketing material and trilingual prompts, English, Spanish, and Francais. Pair up to eight Bluetooth cell phones and headsets with the base. Two can be connected at one time. Only one cell phone or handset can be activated on a call at one time. Tested with most of the popular cell phones and headsets of the time. And that list is hilarious because it says Motorola, Samsung, LG, Nokia, Sony, Ericsson, RIM, Palm, Southwing, and Plantronics. So obviously Southwing and Plantronics for Bluetooth headsets but most of those others aren't even on the map anymore. Sure, Motorola's still building a phone every once in a while. Samsung's still killing it. LG's still out there, but Nokia, I mean, they're hardly on the scene. And Sony Ericsson, basically gone. I, they drop Xperia's once in a while. Rim, obviously, completely gone. And Palm, again, rest in peace. So, let's open up this box. That was a lot to talk about. This thing has more features than really any other cordless phone that ever existed, which is why we're calling it the greatest cordless phone of all time and it's beautiful. So, I'm gonna get this thing open here. Dual flaps on the box. All right, here we go. Oh, look at that, a beautiful box within a box. They did not skimp. Black, tricolor printing, silver, two to three color print on the box. They weren't messing around. Inside, a great presentation. The manual is hiding under this V for VTech. 
Uh, let's just start tearing the thing open. We've got the manual here, quick start guide that is, the base station, brushed aluminum. I already know it's got blue lights under everything because you know, it says right on the box, blue lights everywhere. That's the most important thing. Uh, we'll take a look at everything else. Telephone line in, power adapter. This is where you will install the extra battery for base station power. Set all this down and let's take out, I mean the handset's presented well. Here's the handset. It shows you the color display on the screen protector, of course. We'll peel that off. Here we go. Color display, brushed aluminum again, speaker, cell phone, and really nice looking navigation. This phone looks incredible, which is why it was featured in a bunch of movies. You'll see it hiding on the counter in a lot of old movies because it looked almost like the Bang & Olufsen cordless phones and it was just a nice piece. The best part is it costs a fraction of what the Bang & Olufsen's cost. I think this was $150 new compared to you know $800 for some of the Bang & Olufsen cordless phones. So you get all the design of those phones, all the beautiful curves and great modern looks for a fraction of the cost. So let's set this thing up. Got some batteries in here. Unfortunately, what we don't have is a landline to test this with. So it only shipped with one battery. This one has two. Um, they wanted you to buy a second battery, which is kind of hilarious. You know, those batteries cost so much money. We must charge the consumer more. Plug the base station battery in here. Let's throw the cover back on the base station. And look at that, it powered up. Check AC power, 12 AM. Gotta set the clock on that like it's a VCR. But I do think it would set the clock automatically off the caller ID. So nice touch there. It did need a call to reach everything. It had to reach the handset as well if you wanted it to set the clock on the phone. There we go, searching for base. Look at that. These are not plugged in and they're running. This is good, good stuff. We've got an animated butterfly on the screen there. And it, it's charging. That battery is charging the phone. I'm impressed. I am impressed, VTech. All right, we got some AC power hooked up to the old VTech cordless phone here. It still shows a couple missed calls on the screen. Let's see, oh, phone book, call log, messages, voicemail, intercom, Bluetooth, answering system, settings, ringers, register handset. Those are all of your menu options. Nothing crazy there, and you could pick up the phone with, that is the line. The button lights up orange to tell you that you're using the landline. And if we hit sell, uh, it says proceeding to set up cellular. It won't actually let me do anything. All I can do is hit cancel. So let's head over to the handset because that's obviously the coolest part of this thing. So we'll hit the menu here. Everything's animated, phone book, call log, messages, voicemail, cool animations too. All right, settings, and you can name the handsets, you can set the tone, volume, language, contrast, cool stuff like that. But the most important thing on here, I think we need to try to set the ringtone. The ringer shows a 10 inch subwoofer in a box, I doubt it sounds like that. I would be impressed if it would. I also just noticed the VTech logo is the speaker, which is really cool. Just nice touches everywhere. Ringers, ringer, you, so you can choose a ringer for home, cell phone one and cell phone two. Let's pick home, ringer melody, melody. Nice. Same lyric tone, but lower. Lower and slower. So we made it through the melodies. Let's listen to some of the music. Ah, classical music. This sounds pretty good, honestly, for being old school polyphonic. Like that's loud and it, it's hitting most of the frequency range there. I'm impressed. There you go, polyphonic ringers on your cordless phone. Something basically unheard of. Most of these features were unnecessary and I think that led to this phone not selling well and crazy feature phones like this just vanishing uh, about as quickly as they came. So the original cordless phones were of course just like simple monochrome LCD displays, maybe a backlight if you were lucky with a keypad. They didn't need to have different ringers or anything like that. They had answer and hang up buttons and a keypad. That was the phone. And this came along and it was so much of a cordless phone that it didn't make sense. The timing didn't help it either. It was really into the cell phone era, which meant that you just didn't need this. So what they tried to position this phone as 
was rural customers could leave their cell phone that got mediocre reception beside the base and the base and the handset would become an extension of their cell phone so they'd have service no matter where they were. And who really needed that? I mean, cell phones got better so fast that cordless phones didn't have a chance. So nowadays we are back to old school monochrome displays on the cordless phones that they still sell. VTech's still kicking, still making mostly retro styled phones and the same phones that came two generations before this. Monochrome display, multi-handset, multi-line cordless phones. But this one is the greatest cordless phone ever made as far as I'm concerned. Thank you guys so much for watching Tech Throwback and I can't wait to see you on the next one.